Athletics Training. You are certified and expert strength and conditioning coach for cycling, running, and triathlon performance. We're here back at the gym once again to show you guys what's called an Eastern Squat. So for those of you who have watched or seen or were live participants of my USA Cycling webinar on strength training for cycling success, this is going to be familiar. This is going to be the actual video of how to go through this motion. As we go through this, it's really important to remember that as with any strength and conditioning exercise, we want to be pain free. We don't want any tightness, numbness, tingling, electric feel, and especially no sharp pain or dull aches. So if at any point during any of these exercises in any of the videos on the Human Vortex Training channel, I want you guys to seek out a physical therapist to check you out and make sure things are okay. Don't wait anytime we have sharp pain in particular or loss of sensation or numbness slash an electric fuel. We always want to go to our primary care physician, our family doctor, and a physical therapist immediately. Don't wait. So what we're going to do today is what's called the Eastern Squat. Now one of the things you guys are going to notice is that the squat that we're going to do today is going to be very similar if you take a picture from the side to how you look on the bike. And this is an exercise I really like to use in the base time of the year to see how athletes are progressing, right? Don't have to see them on the bike. They don't have to send me video on the trainer or have a loved one or friend videotape them out on the track or on a closed road. We're able to actually look at, hey, what's your riding position going to look like with all the work we've done through the thoracic extension opening up the shoulders, getting the glutes to fire. And this is a simple exercise that you guys can do at home to check where you are, just have somebody take a photo, or if you want, you can take your cell phone and set it up so that you can actually take a picture as you go. First thing for the Eastern squats, we want to make sure that we're barefoot. This is one of the things that we want to do at home, especially now because a lot of gyms require that you wear shoes. So always make sure you're aware of what the rules and regulations are at your gym. We don't want to break any rules. We want to make sure everybody's nice and happy. Next, we're going to make sure we tuck in here. We want to keep uh, our waistband even with our hips. So if you have an anterior pelvic tilt, you're going to look a little bit like this. This is where the top of your hips are angled down. Or if you have a posterior tilt, which hopefully none of you do, you're going to be angled up. Or if you have a nice neutral, we're going to be right here. You're going to find the top of the bone of your pelvis, put your hand right on top where your love handles would be, and we're going to stay right there. That's where we want our uh, waistband to be. Now, once we have that, there are two or three different variations of this. We're going to start with the basic that you guys can do at home. We're going to start with the feet shoulder width apart, and what we want to try and do is we're going to keep our back straight as we sink back into a deep squat. So some of you may notice, like some of the athletes I get, you get to here, and you're really struggling, the back is starting to round, and you're shaking, you can't hold it, that's okay. What we'll do for you guys is we'll start off with about a 16 pound kettlebell or a 15 pound dumbbell, holding it sideways, so lengthwise. We're choosing a little bit of a heavier kettlebell because it's gonna help you keep the weight back on your heels. So about 15 pounds seems to be about right. Hold it right underneath your chin, sit back, and the key for this is putting the weight on the heels so you can wiggle the toes, and we're gonna keep our back straight and go as low as you can, staying nice and upright. So we don't wanna hyperextend and we don't wanna arch our back. Okay, we're gonna hold this for about 15 seconds for beginners, or 10 seconds, again, pain-free. So this is the beginner's position. For those of you who have a little bit better range of motion, you can get all the way down. What we're gonna do is keep our hands together, elbows in tight to the torso, not out here. We're gonna keep them nice and in. Feet shoulder width apart. We're gonna sink down as low as we can before we get what's called a butt wink, and that's where you kind of, your pelvis rolls back. We're gonna sit down at the bottom. Notice my back is staying nice and straight as I go down. I can extend my hands. My feet are nice and flat on the ground, but there's no weight in my toes. You can see I'm wiggling my toes the whole time here and then I'm gonna fire my glutes to stand back up. So the end of the Eastern squat, so there's a little bit too low, the end of the Eastern squat, we don't wanna round our back and stand up here. We wanna teach those glutes to fire to stand up. For those of you who are kind of in between, you're not quite advanced, you can't get quite as far down on the ground, but you don't have problems getting to parallel, which is where the hip and knee are even. What we can do is take a lighter dumbbell, holding it, Vertical. So this is the goblet position, or goblet squats. We're going to hold the kettlebell here, again keeping the elbows in close to the body, shoulders back, not forward, back, that good posture we've been talking about. Feet shoulder width apart, we're going to hold it in close, and this is going to allow you to get a little bit lower, just below parallel, and wiggle your toes, because what you guys will notice if you're getting the parallel, is you may be a parallel, but you're going to have your weight forward on your toes. So you want to keep it back, elbows off the knees, nice and straight, 
15 to 20 seconds for beginners. Fire the glutes to come up, the back should never break. And that is the Eastern Squat. Now what you guys will notice, I have a couple pictures which I'm going to show you here on the left side of the screen. These are a couple different athletes that I have. So the top picture is them doing the Eastern Squat with a variety of weights because they're beginners and their position on the bike below. So what you're going to notice is the Eastern Squat position that we just went over correlates very closely to how they're going to look sitting on the bike. This is a great way during base period to kind of track your progress. Is my strength training balancing out my hips? Is my back getting stronger? Am I able to lock my ribcage and my pelvis together and my spine as the chassis by using the proper muscles? Or am I going the wrong direction? Now, some of this has to do with flexibility. That's a different video. But for right now, these are the Eastern squats. Take a look at how you look at the Eastern squats and then have somebody take a picture of you on the bike and you'll see some pretty significant changes and uh, improvements as you go throughout the year and pay attention to your Eastern squats. You'll come into the road riding season, able to sit more powerfully on the bike, rotate those hips forward, and really use that chassis to be as a diesel engine for you guys to just blow your competition out of the water. So until next time, remember train smarter, not harder, and it is always all about you.